dollars, which was not possible earlier. Okay, so that's the advantage of the cloud CRM. Okay, so what is the once again the question? What I would get out of a SaaS or a cloud CRM? Suppose if you're running a CRM in your premise uh, at your enterprise level, you need to take care of all the patch and release management. If the application comes down, you should have your internal IT department to jump on it and fix it, right? And the other part is that you also have to keep yourself abreast in upgrading the application, right? And these two important critical aspects are now being taken care of by the product vendors. State, for example, if you take a Salesforce or Fusion CRM, the entire release management is taken care of by the respective vendor. So whenever a new product is released, automatically it is available to all the users who subscribe for the application. And also, you could see that the version compatibility, right? It's the same version and same functionality which has been given to a broader audience, right? And also, it is available globally. You need not worry about, I have some users in Europe, I have some users in Asia Pacific, and I have some users in India. How I am going to take care? All they need to do is just to log in and you will see all that that's being upgraded, it is available for them. Okay, so as I mentioned to you, the total cost of ownership of having a SaaS CRM, right? The, the ability to move it from a CapEx and OpEx, it's because it's charged per user and low upfront cost and subscription based. In the subsequent slides, I will show you the advantage of moving from an enterprise CRM to a uh, SaaS based CRM. Okay, so take a look at this slide, okay? So you see on, on to your left, the enterprise CRM, on to your right, the cloud CRM, okay? So in any implementation project, right, you look at uh, three important things. One is your implementation risk and how how quick I can break even of the investment of the I've made and when I would start recognizing the return on investment of my implementation and increase value to the customer. So majority of you would agree if you have worked in any of this uh, enterprise CRM projects, normally it takes a long time to implement, right? I have not seen any CRM project uh, which is up for a large scale enterprise, it would take anywhere between 12 to 18 months. If it's a mid mid-size enterprise, it would take anywhere between 6 to 12 months. So there was never a time where we talk about going live on a CRM within a 3 or 4 months time. That's what happens with an enterprise CRM. But if it really, if you look at a cloud CRM, the people are talking about a go live time of 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 14 weeks, right? How are the complex requirements they have, they could say that they can go live at a lesser time and start realizing the value. At the same time, the break-even, right? So you for enterprise CR where, where you would have spent $2 million, $3 million in implementing a CRM, and uh, when you look at the return on investment of that, it would take at least two and a half years or three years to realize that the return on investment of the particular application. But if you take a cloud, actually it would take six months for you to start realizing the value. So end of that, what it means to, to the customer is that increased value to the customer. In addition to that, whatever that you have today on the cloud, right, it is going to uh, take care of some of the new technologies, be it a net 2.4 or it's a kind of a, a mashup integration we're talking about. You're keeping yourself abreast to the uh, technology. So when the technology grows, your company also moves in the same direction. So you need not worry about keep upgrading your technology even now and then because subscribing to a advanced application on the cloud, it means that they will take you along the way when they're doing the product development. Okay, and I'm on to the next slide. Okay, so uh, it's a small, uh, they would say like an iceberg, right? So what you would see is a tip of an iceberg, right? Which is the tip of an iceberg is what it would cost you for a two implement a SaaS CRM, but when you go for an enterprise CRM, a lot of companies, they realize that it's not just a software licenses and implementation cost. In addition to that, they need to spend on hardware, infrastructure, personal, maintenance, and training. So in addition to the cost, which what you see, you see a lot of hidden cost, especially when you have an integration, right? You need to provision for a middleware. You need to have uh, take care of the system upgrades, application administrators, as well as the people, right? You need to have a set of people who is going to manage your application. So all these are hidden cost for an on-premise application. But for the SaaS CRM, 
I wouldn't say all this cost are waived off, but at least to an extent you know what is that you're going to spend. Maybe it could be a five to ten percent over and above your estimate, but you're never but you're never going to end up uh, something like uh, whatever that you estimated uh, for a one million and you end up spending three million on projects. That's what normally happens in the 